comic book people of the world, it is Wednesday, that means it's comic book day. Let me show you what I got this week. First up is Batman issue number 58, The Tyrant Wing Part 1. Someone close to the Penguin has recently died, which is really upsetting. So far, we only know her name is Penny, Penny Cobblepot, and it's very much upset the Penguin. However, the Penguin also has some machinations going into play, one of which is him working for Bane, and taking out some frustrations on Bruce Wayne in the form of trying to take on his manservant, Alfred. I'm going to say this right off the bat, if we find out that Penny turns out to be an actual penguin that died, I will be really pissed off about this story. And writer Tom King would totally do something like that. Nightwing, issue number 52, enter the Nightwings. Eric Grayson, because he's no longer known as Dick Grayson, is still suffering from amnesia. And he's given up his whole vigilante ways. However, it is boring as hell. This is going to be my last issue of reading Nightwing until they bring his memories back. I get that it's a ploy to get readers on board with a new storyline with him, but I'm just not with it. Doesn't make any sense that all of the characters that Nightwing has interacted with in the past, which is basically all of them, and why none of them have tried to jog his memory and why he's fighting against it so much. But anyways, if you are interested in this issue, there are other vigilantes now taking up the role of Nightwing, but not really vigilantes. I don't want to spoil it. X-Men Red issue number 10, The Hate Machine, part 10. Jean Grey is finally starting to use her smarts and not just her telepathic abilities. She's enlisting the aid of the other superheroes in the Marvel universe universe to go against Cassandra Nova who's attempting to do a big war. And I'm really glad that Jean is doing this rather than taking on Cassandra all by herself. I mean, all these superheroes help each other, why not help the X-Men too? Despite Jean Grey's weird shoulder pad thing that she's got going on, this is a great series. Spider-Geddon issue number three. All of the spider people from all the different universes have combined together again, at least those who haven't been killed off yet. And they're trying to recruit new spider people, some of which are a bit darker and may use lethal means in order to get what they want. They're fighting the Inheritor clan, which happens to be a family that sucks out the life forces of spider totems, and they've quite literally eaten a lot of the spider people from the universes that we know. There may be a slightly darker plan at play for the lethal spider people that aren't afraid to get their hands dirty. Although you just know that Peter Parker from the main universe is going to do something to try to stop that, or at least somehow come up with some other plan that'll win the day at the end. Be Green Lantern issue number one, because for some reason DC decided we needed a rebooting of numbering for how George to be Green Lantern once again. This isn't a rebooting of the story in any way, it's just a rebooting of the numbering where Hal Jordan is now back on Earth and his battery is being reformatted or something to that effect. But the Guardians are bringing him back into the core to help find a traitor amongst them. This is written by Grant Morrison and it is definitely a Grant Morrison type of storyline, being that it's weird and it goes off into different tangents and sometimes it doesn't completely make sense. It's not horrible in any way whatsoever, but it is one of those where you'll have to pay very close attention to each of the panels and continue on reading each issue to try to understand what's going on. Finally, I read Infinity Wars issue number five. Gamora is still on her dark crusade where she collected all of the Infinity Gems and sentenced all of the superheroes who are now combined in an Amalgamish kind of way to fight a creature in Soul World. Loki has formed his own band of heroes where they themselves have been able to collect their own versions of the Infinity Gems and be able to take the fight directly to Gamora. But it was all just a big master plan on Loki's part to find out who's been manipulating him. This has all been a really convoluted story. I mean, it had some good parts to it, and I will finish it. But this is not one of the greater stories involving the Infinity Gems. But those are all of the comic books I had a chance to read this week. I also did read Iceman issue number three, but I have to do a separate video on that. Besides the fact that I love Iceman, but also because we get to see Iceman team up with Firestar and Spider-Man. Spider-Man and his amazing friends, baby. That is it. What did you guys read this week? Leave comments down below and let me know. With that, thank you guys for watching me in this video. If you haven't done it yet, subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, hit that like button. Also put on that notification bell so you know when I put up future videos. Check out my Patreon site when you get a chance. Check out my social media sites, my websites, and everything else out there. Peace, love, namaste, and I'll see you later. Peace. I'll be so disappointed if we find out that the penguin is just mourning the passing of his favorite penguin that happens to be named Penny. That would just be such a letdown. Another thing, I don't know if you noticed or not, but he's being drawn very similar to how Danny DeVito portrayed the penguin in Batman Returns. It's not the first time that's been done, but it's much more evident now.